according to Statistics South Africa, 49.2% of the population over the age of 18 falls below the upper bound poverty line in South Africa. Access to quality and affordable food remains a justice issue in South Africa. I am Isasi Pingosi Mdingi, your host here at Young Researchers Hub, where science and the public meet. Today, we are having a conversation uh, that I think all of us uh, cannot wait or rather cannot put a pause on. It's an everyday reality, the interrogation of access to quality food and affordable food with the inflation rate, the economic state of the country. The food hikes have been something that all of us can just not handle. You go to the shop with a thousand red now, you can barely go out with something that is tangible. And today we're having a conversation once again with Dr. Metuli, fondly known as Dogotela Wetu, as we call her in the streets of Facebook because of her accessibility to all of us um, in terms of everything that we want to engage her on. Um, Dr. Metuli, um, which is um, known as Kanyo also on Facebook, Metula, sorry, um, was born, bred, and butted in a rural village of Eastern Cape province at Mabeleni location in Middle Drift, which is a very small town just up between Alice and King William's town. And she studied her basic education there. She obtained her undergraduate degree, Bachelor of Social Science in 2012, from the University of Forte. She also received her PhD in communication from the University of Forte in 2019 after writing the thesis titled Local Web News as Tools for Framing Food Security. She is an amazing scholar that has made scholarly contribution through peer-reviewed papers and conference presentation. Her research interests remain in the fields of community or local inter media intervention in community developmental and social change issues. The focus of both her master's dissertation and PhD thesis was on community or local content media social responsibility, agenda setting, and framing and social community development. She is now a lecturer for journalism and media studies in the School of Communication at Northwest University, Poshastro. And I must tell you that one of her favorite areas in research is literature review, which happens to be something that we all cry over when we're supposed to do it, that it's difficult, it's hard to do. And she happens to love making that part on students. Dr. Metula, thank you for gracing us again today. Welcome to the Young Researchers Hub. How are you today? Hi, hi, Issa and dear Pila. And dear Pila, where's Keko Gotuna Mubuti? Because uh, I love food. <laughs> I, 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 I like any conversation that has uh, some to, something to do with um, food. So, yeah, I'm okay. And um, yes, I, I don't know, maybe um, we still need to talk about literature, literature review because uh, <laughs> in my issue. own <laughs> in my own observation, <laughs> if you like books, <laughs> if you like books, then you won't have any problem with literature review. There you have it, okay, guys. Dr. Betula is saying, if you love reading, then literature review shouldn't be a problem. However, doctor, I think there are many students who will be like, no, it's not about reading, but we'll have this conversation, obviously, as we had talked about it, that it's a conversation that we need to unpack. I don't necessarily think that most students don't like the reading part, but I think it's not being able to process their Connected thoughts dogs. and the structuring currently in everything. So it's not that we cannot do this, but the structure and how to, to go about it, I think that's where we're most struggling the most as to how do I then go about it, which is, I think if we're able to read and we're just um, finding it difficult on this part, it'll be an easier conversation because it's just saying, once you have this and this and this and this, this is how you you go about it. Because I was reading your, your, your thesis and I was like, why is she having it so easy? Because everything is flowing currently. And 
why I can't I have it like this myself? And as I was reading through and, this, and, and it is, it is it a long chapter. Very difficult to read. It through. is the longest chapter of all chapters. I know, right? But what I enjoyed the most was that um, it's not difficult to read. Mm. Um, I like most of the time when you engage with research, you read all three, about 18 pages of the paper and you're like, what is this person saying? And is it me or is it the paper just too difficult to read? So I, I always enjoy reading that for something, especially that talks about what you touch on something that is so accessible to everyone that mm. um, it doesn't need me to be knowledgeable in the field or that I have to have my dictionary next to me trying to understand what you're trying to say. And that's uh, one I of think, the reasons I think why. one of the reasons why um, the research that is specifically in my field is more accessible to anyone. Like uh, it is very easy for anyone to understand. It is because um, it is mostly influenced by what is happening in the society. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But anyway, Dr. Mitchell, um, we'll have this conversation about research. We, we had the first time. And I must tell you, there's been a lot of people who have been streaming um, and checking it out on YouTube as they now write their research proposal. And some people, some will come and ask me, how do I draft this? And like, don't worry, just go on YouTube, you'll find Dr. Mitula has explained the whole process, you'll find it easy. So I, I, I must very, very much thank you for unpacking that part. I think it's gonna assist a lot of um, um, students in their journey of just trying to also find their fit um, into, in, into the research. Just a highlight to anyone who's maybe trying to understand what we're talking about. The first session we had was with Dr. Metula and we're unpacking, let's talk research. So if you are in your journey of starting research or you're interested in research, you're interested in writing papers um, and you need to do a thorough research, go there and she explains everything in the most simplest way and everything just clicks up when you when you read, it was, sorry, when you listen to it, they're like, oh, okay, it's not that difficult, but it's just that I didn't know. And today we are interested into your um, PhD thesis, um, which you unpack um, using um, web newspapers as a tool to frame social secu um, um, food security. May you please take us through your background of the study, um, just to, to give us a background, what is the study about and why particularly this study? Okay, thank you, Isa. Uh, this study was firstly influenced by my personal upbringing. Uh, I grew up from a very disadvantaged background uh, where at times we would not have um, food, we would go to bed without food. And then uh, I grew up uh, in a rural area where backyard gardening was part of our lifestyle and another method or a channel of getting food. However, uh, as years go by, uh, I see a massive change. Uh, unfortunately, not a positive one. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the rate of poverty mm -hmm. and food insecurity is growing. The motivation for gardening is um, depreciating on the other side. So my assumption is that people mm -hmm are no longer uh, seeing a value in gardening, or if they do see a value, they are ignorant. Thus, mm -hmm. I, I, I assume that um, people need more of uh, informative, persuasive, or educative programs uh, that will promote the importance of using their own uh, resources, which is in this case of food, uh, it will be learned um, for food uh, production. So that means um, the educative or persuasive um, initiatives should be based on community strengths and potentials. Also, they should involve highlighting the resources, the skills and the experience available in our communities that can help in bettering our lives. So in this case, people will be encouraged or should be encouraged and 
are empowered to utilize um, what they already have, which is in this case, uh, the small land that they own uh, in their households to produce food. Now, um, if I go to the background of the study, I was just um, unpacking uh, the motivation from my own personal view. So now, mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the background of the study, I think everyone knows um, or everyone understands that food um, security is a critical issue um, in the developing world. And it has been critical because it is linked with poverty. Many homes across the country are food insecure, which means that they suffer from lack of access to stable and affordable food supply. So Eastern Cape uh, happened to be one of the provinces in South Africa that is food insecure. Despite the fact that the province consists of many rural areas that have large and arable agricultural land that can possibly uh, provide channels for food security. So um, Eastern Cape province has more than 50% uh, of people um, living in agricultural households. However, it is one of the poorest provinces in South Africa with most of the municip municipal districts suffering from massive poverty rates than the national average. And poverty is especially um, high among agricultural households living in rural areas. Therefore, an integrated um, process of media framing of the issue was needed uh, to be outlined in order to evaluate um, food insecurity significance in media publication. Uh, that includes media production, content, and media use perspective. So the aim for that will be uh, to inform uh, the public about the enormity of the issue. However, it has been discovered that uh, the coverage of food security related stories is very low, uh, especially in poor communities. So someone will ask me um, why local based newspapers because uh, we have various um, media outlets. So uh, local newspapers are more useful in development rather than uh, the big urban newspapers because mm. they provide balanced and critical reports of issues, uh, processes and events in uh, particular communities. And then local web-based newspapers, on the other hand, are more useful like any other technical media that is available to the public because of its ability to reach wider audience and its participatory mode, which is now when I speak of the participatory mode, um, I, I speak of um, the public being able to participate in their news uh, by commenting and sharing. So mm -hmm. most importantly, local based newspapers uh, have a role of disseminating information and news aimed at betterment of the society and put focus um, to that particular location. That means there are um, these local web newspapers or these local newspapers are published in a, speci in a specific uh, locality all in benefit of that local community. And the edit editorial trust should consequently be able to meet the interest and the needs of that particular location. And these newspapers are highly accessible form because uh, they are mostly free and they are not uh, profit driven. And then now um, someone will ask me, and then uh, where does media fit in in food security issues? Uh, the media, especially local media outlets should be having a framework 
that helps mm. in the production and dissemination of the content that empowers and promotes food security as a critical issue that needs public attention. Because after many accusations um, and critics about uh, the media system, in which those uh, critics include um, one, the perception that uh, media is monopolized, two, that um, the commercialization of media doesn't concern uh, the interests and rights of the public. And finally, that it produces corrupted, corrupted culture and dangerously selfish politics. Media had mm. uh, taken a social obligation role to contribute to the improvement of the community by promoting public opinion and creating platforms for development. So the basic assumption of social responsibility theory uh, which built up this uh, particular study is that uh, media should accept accountability and achieve mm. certain duties to the public. Therefore, mm. in my assumption and as expected from the local media, local media should produce contents um, that address social ills in which they should include food security. Or, or mm. any harm that is inflicted upon the minority groups with the aim of finding solutions. And that requires the framing of the security issue uh, in an influential manner. So how does uh, framing an issue in media help? The media, uh, the framing theory, which is also uh, the theory that built up this study, uh, which supplements uh, the social responsibility theory does agree that the media shapes the way people view current issues. It also reveals that all mediums have control over public opinion if mm. they focus attention on selected issues in an influential and well-documented manner. So the aim would be to encourage uh, a specific understanding, assessment, or resolution. So once media focuses on the issue, people will perceive that issue as important. So in this case, media should focus on food security issues so that people can perceive food insecurity as an important issue and an issue that needs um, their attention. So uh, mm -hmm. framing focus on how media draw uh, the public uh, eye to a specific topic. And then it takes a step further to create a frame through which the audience will comprehend such information. So they don't just um, publish uh, information, they do have uh, their selection of words uh, in which um, they are mainly uh, they are, they are that people's uh, is for the public to understand a specific issue in a particular manner. So that means uh, media can regulate the audience's perception and the acceptance of a particular meaning. So framing theory demonstrates how society is influenced by media, which put um, it's, uh, which puts it in a good position to influence the public to take a role in food production initiatives if it puts food security as a salient issue. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, the background of um, connecting the study. Uh, the aim was to uh, find out if um, the, the selected um, local newspapers uh, do frame food security in the Eastern Cape province. Um, thank you, Dr. Metula. You, you you mentioned something which is I also had highlighted on your on your, on your paper when you say the media shapes how people um, view the world and what they gravitate towards and and it, it it reminds me of the the current situation we in that just in, in passing um, that when you look at research and everything you find out that 
reading, research, and writing. It's not something that is very um, pushed as, as a thing to be done in the media. And um, everything is done in, in short videos, short snaps, and all of that. And once you write something that is beyond a paragraph, people just pass through it, which is, yeah. it's because they're so used to reading short things or rather just having a video. And there's not been a campaign on actually influencing people to read, write, and engage on research. And exactly what you're talking about now when it comes to food security. Because I remember the first time I heard about the word food security was when I was at Forte, I was engaging with agricultural students. And for the longest time, I didn't understand what they were talking about. <laughs> and it, it, it felt like a far-fetched um, concept because it's like, I, I think the combination of the two words didn't mm. make sense to me. Mm. Food and security in one place just didn't click up. And only to find out that this was my daily living experience that whatever happens in food production affects my accessibility, the kind of quality of food and the affordability of that food, which is in the nutshell, for security. And I, I could imagine that if I myself as also a student in university, if I couldn't grasp that concept, how much difficult yeah. it is in, 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 in communities that we live in. And I just before you go to the main findings of your research, I had a question um, as to what is, did you uh, check on Isoles or whether they have um, a sharing and what, how how big it is. The reason why I'm asking you is because Iso Lezwe speaks mostly um, to our people, the vernacular, everything is done in Zikosa. So in that way, it's easier to penetrate our communities. And I was just interested in understanding if you had gone that far into research as, as to what is their framing or rather their position or how far they've gone in framing food security in their local paper to respond to such crisis. You know, you know, uh, I haven't thought about that. Um, it's always it was in part of um, these selected newspapers. Uh, and honestly, I, I don't have uh, any reason for that, but I only chose um, those four uh, newspapers that were available uh, on that specific time for this specific study. And I, my, I must say that uh, what you're saying is very important because uh, if you want to speak uh, to the people and um, at the grassroots, uh, you have to speak in the language that they do understand. Mm -hmm. So um, um, covering these um, stories um, in, in, in indigenous languages um, makes it more effective. So yeah. I haven't looked at it, but yes, um, it, it is very important to use uh, indigenous languages or the local languages um, in this mm. regard. Mm. Um, that means to young researchers after you, they have an opportunity to look at that um, area as to how is um, newspapers like Isolese, I could imagine even in other provinces, there are newspapers like that and how much they're covering the issue of food security. and. I, I, I could imagine how important it is now in time of COVID, um, because starting from last year, it's to um, nutritious food, your, your stomach, it was about what kind of a food you are receiving. Yes. And I think that's where everything shifted from just eating food to eating vegetables, to eating um, fruit and um, all different kinds of nutritious food. And that comes at a cost and it's not really affordable to many people. And then it paused and you, you, you would have seen that many people started having their own background gardens. They started um, um, mm. doing, um, promoting mm. that, guys, can we have our own gardens? Although it was a thing, but I think it became more of a thing. And I yeah. think going forward, it's something that will become a part and parcel of our lives that we grow food in our backyards um, because it seems to be, a, a lot cheaper than going to a local market and buy um, 
the, the already grown food. And in moving forward, Doctor, um, just watching the time, I would love us that you, you take us through now your main findings, understanding that you had your problem that you wanted to figure out. Now, what were your main findings in, in, in that regard? Okay, yes, sir. Um, this study had uh, three ob objectives, which is firstly, uh, to find out how Eastern Cape local web newspapers frame food security regarding uh, the possibilities of food availability, accessibility, affordability in Eastern Cape province. And then secondly, um, the objective was to ascertain uh, those issues about food security that are raised uh, by these Eastern Cape local um, web newspapers. And then finally, and the objective was to establish the extent to which Eastern Cape local web newspaper frame, framing is helpful in ensuring participation, empowerment, and community mobilization for food securing purposes. So um, some people don't know how, how uh, does the content um, analysis go. Um, so this study used um, content qualitative content analysis. So when I use content analysis, I analyze the stories that are published on those newspapers. So the information that I used here um, is not just the general information, is the information that I've taken um, from the content of those newspapers. So I used qualitative content analysis uh, in gathering the data uh, and to evaluate the relevance of these four selected uh, newspapers. And the newspapers that we understand were Dispatch Live, Herald Live, We Talk of the Town, and Go and Express. Uh, so this approach allowed me to interpret um, the phenomena in terms of meanings that they used from the article's content. So um, you must also note that um, I looked at the latent or the deeper meaning of the content, not just at the content as it manifests from the articles, but I looked at the deeper meaning. And mm -hmm. I investigated it using uh, my thoughts, my insights, and my knowledge. So um, I want to go to um, the findings, the summary of the findings. Uh, so I'll first look at the first objective of the study, which was to find out how Eastern Cape local web newspapers frame food security regarding the possibilities of food availability, accessibility, affordability in, in the Eastern Cape province. So the study found out that the selected uh, local web newspapers published uh, in Eastern Cape province do frame food security related content. All of them had content that speaks to possibilities of food availability, accessibility, and affordability in the Eastern Cape. In this regard, um, from their framing, uh, the study identified channels of food security in the Eastern Cape community, such as natural food production, local food production, uh, livestock production, and smallholder farming. Now, uh, let's look at the national food, at the natural food production. The content framed natural food production as a channel for food security that is available in the Eastern Cape. Uh, speaking of natural foods in the Eastern Cape, citrus uh, production has been regarded as a powerhouse of South African citrus industry, which accounts for 28% of citrus production in South Africa. Also, it has been revealed that Eastern Cape has the most progressive and successful black citrus growers in the country and have the most opportunity to generate about 50% of local consumption and over third 
um, of South Africa citrus export. Some staple foods, which are grains and fruits, have positive had positively contributed to informal uh, food trading, and they have increased food security for traders. Even though there is a need, still a need for increased state recognition of these traders. Now let's go to the second um, channel of food security in the Eastern Cape, which is crop production. It has been mentioned as a source of food security um, and it has been identified as um, a food security channel that one can harvest and sell, uh, can create jobs and promote food security. So tea harvesting has been mentioned amongst uh, crops that are available in some parts of the Eastern Cape province, including Lusikisiki. So tea harvest harvesting has been exemplified amongst the crops that can be used to fight household level poverty and open economic opportunities. Reference was made from a 30 year old woman who for a quite um, some time has been depending only on harvesting tea leaves to sustain herself and her three children. Similarly to a 57 year old man um, and his three children that are also depending on the ski estate where the man delivers about uh, 40 kg of tea leaves every week. So these instances highlight not, the only not only the economic benefit of tea planting, but also a massive role that crop production plays in, um, in putting food on the table and in job creation and in, in improving rural um, income for both men and women. Now, um, let's look at um, the livestock uh, production as um, another channel of food uh, that has been found um, in the East NK province. So the content um, that was analyzed uh, revealed that Eastern Cape has great chances to lead uh, the way as the bread basket of South Africa because um, it is a leading uh, in livestock numbers uh, in the world in the world, world country by 3.2 million heads of cattle, uh, 3.7.3 million of sheep, and 2.2 million of goats. On the other hand, uh, the Eastern Cape Mohe industry is producing 34% of South Africa's total wool. Moreover, the meat industry and dairy are also central contributors of province's economy. So that shows a massive role that livestock production plays in both global and local economic growth that if used the responsible chances of eradicating poverty that is linked with food security is possible. Also, the literature reveals that growth in the consumption of milk and meat products in developing Asia contributed to the high growth of income and rapid urbanization. Meanwhile, the decline of consumption of milk and meat products in the sub-Saharan Africa declined the income. So the demand uh, for livestock production in developing regions such as South Africa uh, is still large. So now um, let's look at um, the smaller farming, smallholder farming, which was also found as a channel uh, to food security by these um, newspapers. Um, smallholder farming is also put on the forefront of the ways in which people uh, in the Eastern Cape can access food. It is therefore uh, highlighted there um, that there is no, there is need to transform the agricultural sector uh, by unlocking the potential of Eastern Cape smallholder farmers. 
in that um, it has been mentioned that Eastern Cape, um, Eastern Water Farmers Association has an initiative to advance um, the interest of farming community that is situated in and around the Shaw Park area in the Eastern Cape. Uh, the main objective of this border is to ensure uh, the well being and the welfare of its members and communities that promotes the needs of farmers. Amongst those farmers, there are beef farmers, dairy farmers, uh, freshwater, fish, game, goats, uh, hydroponics, nurseries, pineapples, and sheep. Uh, in addition to that, um, smallholder farming is also expected to play a significant role in poverty alleviation and rural development by growing a rural economy and contributing to sustainable food supply. So small for, for smallholder farming contribution to food production, growth, stability, security has been recognized as significant and their numbers have grown up to 500 million smallholder farmers uh, worldwide. And then um, we also have, we also found um, local food uh, production as another method of, um, of finding uh, food security or another channel of food security. So um, local food security has been mentioned um, as another channel of food security. It has been mentioned that Eastern Cape is an agro-based province, meaning it depends on agricultural products as raw material. Therefore, there is need to increase mm. agricultural productivity to boost food production, achieve food security, sustainable economic development. And this can happen if there is an increase in the whole local grown food that everyone can afford. So um, after the first objective, uh, I looked at the second objective of the study. Uh, the second objective of the study was to ascertain those issues uh, about food security that are raised by these um, local web newspapers. And uh, I found uh, many of them. Uh, so, the web newspaper selected highlight, highlighted the following issues that are of concern with regards to food security. Uh, it is land redistribution, job creation, and economic load, uh, drought, corruption, then the labor policies, farm mismanagement and conflicts, and government support. So if we look at um, land distribution, um, land distribution has a positive contributing uh, factor to food security uh, because land restorative initiatives are vital to stimulate uh, the province's growth, uh, to create the connection between individuals, families, communities, culture, and agriculture. So in that regard, land reinstatement seems not to um, just uh, about, be about food security issue, but also a social and a cultural concern because uh, it is more um, close to someone's identity. However, the content revealed that Black people are restricted to only 13% 30, of the land, and that led to a crippling rural economy and resulted in food insecurity. Therefore, the reinstitution of and redistribution of the land will help in rebuilding um, a new South African economy, help in kickstarting rural economy, transfer ownership uh, to new class farmers and create new laws that will strengthen land titles for vulnerable groups such as farm workers in that food security could be achieved. However, uh, it has been noted that land could possibly contribute to food security if only those 
small numbers who benefited from land reinstitution can ensure that it is farmed productively. And if those who benefited um, will choose to work land over money payout. However, many families who benefited from land uh, reinstitution and distribution uh, chose financial compensation, hence they are still poor. So uh, another factor um, that has been found in the content of um, these local newspapers is job creation and economic growth, uh, which might help in uh, eradicating food inse insecurity. So demonstrating the relationship between farming and job creation, um, because, aimed from, because farming that is aimed at producing food also opens job opportunities and economic growth. That has been exemplified uh, with the nuts factory that is situated in Mwekha and Mpashe in the Eastern Cape province, which produces uh, 2,400 tons of nuts per year, in which its labor intensive operations could bring about 500 jobs in its initial stage and later generated um, 600 jobs in its full production. Also, um, this site generates not less than 40 million income to the community annually. And these trees are still productive even after 100 years of existence. So this show how natural uh, production is sustainable and um, its extent um, in producing jobs and employing the economy with local communities, thereby fighting um, household hunger that is linked to uh, food insecurity. So uh, in revealing uh, the extent in which um, farming contributes to economic growth, the selected uh, web newspapers illustrated that agriculture uh, contributed 33.6% of the GDP growth in the second quarter of 2017. Remember that this study was connected in 2016. So uh, the figures that I, I am using um, were taken before 2017 because the study was connected yeah, before 2016 or in 2016. So, um, the agriculture contributed 33.6% uh, to the GDP growth in the second quarter of 2017, helping the economy to emerge from a technical recession. Also, Eastern Cape crop production contributed a lot uh, to the country, country's GDP. In that poultry accounts uh, for 16 of the agriculture gross product value, which is G GPV. And then beef uh, is 12%, maize is 11%, and deciduous fruit is 8%, and citrus, um, I, I can't remember the figures of the citrus. And then when merged together, the, the account uh, for 54% of the total uh, agriculture GPV to the tune of um, 132 billion during 2015 and 26, 2016 season. However, the distribution of production according to South African regions, uh, regions put Eastern Cape in 5.6% in poultry um, and 24% in beef, which value of uh, 13.36 million, and then 1% of filled crops and 26% of citrus and deciduous fruit are mainly produced in Eastern Cape. So most importantly, Eastern Cape agricultural labor force stands in third place with 11% after Limpopo in South Africa agriculture labor force. So uh, that shows the importance of uh, agricultural sector in the economy of the Eastern Cape province.
So now um, let's look at government support as a contributing uh, factor, uh, as, as supposedly contributing factor to uh, the food security. The study found out that government's uh, support is a key factor to growing and sustaining the agricultural sector. That has been evidenced by the crushing of the 900 million vegetable project that was established to benefit hundreds of families that live under severe poverty in Queenstown uh, in the Eastern Cape. The project um, halted due to lack of supply of electricity and water from both ESCOM and the Krizani municipality, which are responsible to supply water and electricity for the project. Uh, the failed vegetable product demonstrates the effect uh, of lack of the government to support and supervise uh, the agricultural projects. On the, hand, on the other hand, uh, projects that received financial support from Eastern Cape Development Corporation, which is ECTC and a smaller, um, small enterprise agency, which is SEFA and the Department of Small Business Development uh, with the aim to assist in transiting and in selling them to primary production sites witnessed some success, unlike um, the, the, the other project that was supplied by uh, the Christian municipality and ESCOM. So that shows uh, the importance of government to facilitate uh, these uh, agricultural um, initiatives or the projects uh, in order for them to be successful. And then uh, we have poverty and unemployment, which has uh, been found as a contributing factor to, um, to food insecurity. So the selected local newspapers portrayed uh, poverty and unemployment as issues that go hand in hand with Eastern Cape food insecurity. Poverty rate is in, um, in the province, hovers around 70% with, um, with unemployment rate estimated at 30%. So uh, it is the second highest uh, province in the country after Limpopo. However, it has been said that agriculture and agro-processing are amongst the initiatives to alleviate poverty and address levels of development in the Eastern Cape province. In that agriculture and agro-processing will then um, help in addressing the security and in alleviating poverty in this province. On the other hand, it has been found out that the instability of the Eastern Cape agricultural sector itself result, resulted in job losses that ultimately led to poverty and high rate of unemployment in the Eastern Cape province. So that is the, that is the, the main problem because uh, the same agriculture that um, the Eastern Cape um, province is depending upon um, is, has also become um, a problem because of um, its instability and that led to job losses and um, ultimately led to uh, food insecurity in the province. So job losses in the agricultural sector, uh, which is one of the key factors, uh, sectors of the Eastern Cape economy contributed to the increase of the unemployment um, in the Eastern Cape. So uh, another factor that has been found um, in the content uh, that has been analyzed is the issue of drought. The study find out that even though farming is used as uh, an initiative to fight against issues uh, that contribute to food security, which is poverty, unemployment, and economy, Drought is a major factor that can hinder its effectiveness. However, some of the Eastern Cape farmers have found ways um, to beat it and continue growing crops by using the liquid water they can access for gardening, in that they make use of 
drip uh, irrigation in growing crops, which are certain kinds of fruits and vegetables that includes cauliflower, cabbage to strawberries and garlic. So um, this study also found um, the hindrances, um, the, the, factors, the factors that are hindering the, the process of food security in the Eastern Cape province, uh, which is uh, one of them is the corruption in governments. Corruption is amongst the issues that hinder the promotion of local farming. Therefore, that also affects uh, the process of fighting um, food insecurity in the province. For instance, uh, department funds that are meant to groom local farmers are being used for, by state officials for their own benefit, while the poor farmers that are trying to build their futures are denied uh, the opportunity. So in that corruption and feeble governments are amid the issues that affect uh, people's lives and negatively and also contributing to the input insecurity in the province. And then um, we've also found uh, land and labor policies as, um, as a factor that could um, promote uh, or that could um, posit positively contribute uh, to the food, in food security in the province. So land and labor policies um, are the issues that agriculture Eastern Cape um, needs to influence um, in its decision makings on behalf of its members so that the policy and legislation issues could favor um, farming, thereby fighting food security issues like poverty, unemployment, and economy. So it has been noted that the land reform initiative, like 5050, uh, the Eastern Cape government reform uh, initiative that was launched uh, between ADO and Kekwood, uh, benefits farm workers as they receive farm ownership certificates as partial workers. This way, uh, farm workers tend to not just feel as farm workers, but fully fledged farmers. Moreover, the formation of Farm Workers Trust enabled the farm workers to own 50% of the farm, while the management owns uh, 40%, and the IDC owns only 10% of the ownership. And that means farm workers, uh, commercial farmers, must work together as part of addressing the land reform and land policies together with social economic issues that concern communities, and that includes um, food security. And then we have uh, farm mismanagement and conflicts um, that are also uh, negative contributing factors uh, to the food um, security of the province. So the study found out that the farm mismanagement and conflicts as factors that contribute negatively to Eastern Cape um, food security. That is demonstrated by the report of conflicts and mismanagement that happened in the Eastern Cape T estate, which led to the shutting down of, the, of its operations, uh, a situation that left its workers struggling in debt and could not afford food. So now um, let's look at the third objective uh, and the final objective of um, this study. So uh, the third objective was to establish the extent to which Eastern Cape local newspapers uh, framing is helpful in ensuring participation, empowerment, and community mobilization for food securing uh, purposes. So one of the um, factors um, that the content has revealed um, about the extent in which newspapers are helpful in ensuring um, participation, empowerment, and community mobilization for food securing purposes is promoting local farming. 
So based on the data collected, it has been found that the Eastern Cape local news um, empower the local farmers in that they have emphasized that um, the apartheid, um, after the apartheid era news, um, new laws and policies emerged and the land ownership has been transferred to new class of farmers. So the development of new policies and land ownership serves as an empowering tool uh, to new class of farmers for them to own and work the land thereby producing jobs, food and contribute to the province's economy. And most importantly, this empowerment aims at developing the most rural areas in the Eastern Cape uh, to make a living um, from their land that they, are li they live in. Also as part of empowering people, the provincial government has penned over uh, 50, 50 million on agricultural development projects uh, with the aim of, product, of promoting food production through local farming. Another factor that we found, that the study found as um, a factor that empowers and um, promoting food security and participation is uh, promoting smallholder farming. So the local web newspapers uh, framed smallholder farming as a contributing factor uh, in the provincial levels of food security. Therefore, as part of empowering small, as part of empowering smallholder farmers, it has been revealed that the South African government committed itself to investing in smallholder farming by giving out uh, 5.5 billion of the national budget to support um, 435. Um, no, it's 435,000 subsistence and smallholder farmers over the next three years. So that was from 2017 up to um, 2020. Also, government committed itself to expand the 200,000 uh, smallholder um, producers who sell their products to um, 500,000 smallholders by 2020, which was last year. So furthermore, government vowed to empower smallholder farmers by providing them with what they mostly need, and that includes access to credit, selection of the right, right seeds, agriculture know-how, uh, land preparation and seeding, management of water, energy and soil, pests, disease, disease and weed control, harvesting and storage, as well as access to the market. Uh, another factor that has been found as uh, empowering in that content is uh, empowerment through land uh, ownership. So as form of empowerment selected, uh, newspapers revealed that after the apartheid era, new laws and policies emerged and land ownership transferred to new class farmers. With land ownership transfer, new local farmers are empowered to use the land um, they own to produce food and develop other economic opportunities. So another factor that has been found is agricultural development projects to um, so financial support. So from the data collected, it has been revealed that government is empowering agricultural community projects by giving them financial support. The government has spent over 500 million on agricultural infrastructure development projects to increase agricultural production. Amongst agricultural projects that have received government support are dams revitalization, and irrigation, scheme development, stock water enhancement, livestock handling, uh, and dipping facilities, hydroponics, infrastructure, and fencing of arable land, and planting of maize. 
So these efforts are made to encourage farming that will help in alleviating poverty. So it is also noted that Eastern Cape Rural Development Agency also spent about um, uh, 350 million uh, in, co in construction of three loading ramps and um, livestock marketing. Those ramps helped in marketing and sale of um, 1,766 livestock units uh, belonging to communal and emerging commercial farmers in Pitt area. And they generated about 8.5 million incomes for farmers. Uh, another factor that has been found in that content as empowering and um, as persuading uh, the community to partake uh, in food security issues or food production is government and communities participation in uh, food security. So in terms of promoting participation in food security, the results have revealed that there is participation showed by government and communities in fighting food insecurity. In that, the results indicate that after the apartheid era, government took responsibility of prioritizing food issue. Also, the results reveal uh, the eagerness of communities to part in participating in food security reduction actions um, in that uh, Buffalo City residents in Eastern Cape province um, were cited as examples of communities that had become part of finding solutions to food insecurity by adopting vacant pots and turning them into vegetable gardens and minimizing illegal dumping. So it has also been discovered that uh, people's participation in food security involves learning how they can use um, the soil to feed themselves and government in monitoring. Um, government's monitoring is also uh, significant um, in um, ensuring that people use uh, their land to produce food. So uh, another one is mobilizing women uh, to partake in food security. So as per community mobilization concerned, the third objective of this study, the results have revealed the call for women to partake in local farming to produce fresh and healthy crops and fill their food, food basket. More so, it has been suggested that their dedication and patience will be of great importance when they want to join local farming because it takes a, a while to harvest. Therefore, the results uh, suggest that the community must decide on what they want to grow and must uh, make sure they know how to execute uh, what their goals are for the project by giving guidance and support to the project. So to this end, women are to be mobilized to take responsibility in food production and processing. So um, all in all, that those were the um, summary of findings uh, for this study. Thank you, Issa. Um, thank you, Dr. Majula. You said a mouthful and as I'm sitting and listening to you, uh, quite a lot of things um, have come to my mind. Um, try, as I think about it, the first part will be, I wonder how far would it have been if um, the project of schools where learners were doing gardening in schools, because I remember when I was still in junior secondary school in grade eight and grade nine, we had a period for so, um, natural sciences and we had to go to the garden, make the garden and everything else. Um, and I, in my mind, I was just thinking of how far would have gone um, as a province and as a country if we had kept that in schools um, when, when young learners like myself learn about agriculture at a very young age and then it grows to be part of our lives so much that even beyond um, um, junior secondary school and primary um, we are still able to 
farm for ourselves and not wait to be hired and not find ourselves in this struggle where some people have said that young people don't want to be in agriculture, especially in a way that they'll find themselves with dirty hands and everything. But the second thing, it reminded me of a time when I had a conversation with my friends back when I was still at Forte. And as we read about politics and how China has literally used some of their mountains for food production by studying the, their soil and here we are having a land that can produce and still yet not being used efficiently when countries like China find themselves in a situation where they don't have enough land and they find and manipulate the, the soil they have even in the mountains to be able to, to, to have farming. And in that regard, the last part um, as I was thinking through was that we have for the part, as far as I, I've been growing, um, there have been what they call corporate corporations in, in, in communities, yes. especially yeah. in agriculture. That one has been a lucrative one thing where corruption has mm. found its roots and planted itself and grew so old uh, that those were important um, uh, ways of alleviating poverty. Um, and using and capitalizing on what we good at as a province, agro um, production, but the level of corruption and how people would um, start those um, corporations, but there's no financial management skills, there's no um, skills on how to do commercial farming and many other problems have led to the position that we in today. And just quickly, um, with that try as I was listening to you, I'm like, there's a lot that we still need to teach our communities. And there's a lot that we still need to learn as young people, especially when it comes to agriculture, because like you said, the province is dependent on that, especially even for, 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 for employment, um, food accessibility to food, um, making sure that families are having food on a day-to-day -day basis, not even for selling it or anything. Uh, can you, Doc, quickly take us through your recommendations then after you found all these things? And of course, I acknowledge and, uh, uh, and take note of the strides we've made as a province um, so far in, comp in contributing nationally in terms of agriculture. But it, it, as, it, as I can see from where I'm standing and as I listen to you, there's a very long journey that we still need to travel. And I would like to hear what were some of your recommendations in trying to fast track the, uh, the process of development of our province when it comes to agriculture. Okay, so if you remember from um, my first slide or from my first, um, uh, our fair, very first conversation when I unpacked my motivation on how this study came to my mind, uh, I've touched upon uh, the lack of motivation um, in terms of um, farming. And then I said, um, we need more of the persuasive um, and uh, maybe informative and educative programs uh, that will enable people to uh, take their minds back uh, to their own experiences or, or to any initiative uh, that will come up with the solutions to food insecurity. And then uh, with that in mind, um, I came up with the following recommendations uh, because media is still a powerful tool uh, to perform the informative, educative and persuasive, um, persuasive role uh, to the public or to our communities. So local newspapers should be used as um, tools to encourage more people to be involved in producing food in Eastern Cape uh, by producing more food uh, security-based content that is not just informing people about the channels of food security that are available in the province, but by teaching them ways and means uh, they need to follow in order for them to produce more food. This includes production, management, and 
product C. And then uh, the second one is that local web newspapers should ensure that people become active participants in food security, food security by facilitating the opportunities that are available in food production, informing them about those opportunities and ensuring that these opportunities reach those deserving and those that are in need. So the local newspapers in this case will work as a watchdog for the community. Uh, another uh, recommendation on this study was that the local newspapers should be useful as a tool to facilitate the national development plan actions that are aimed at alleviating poverty, sustaining food supply and rural development, thereby ensuring transparency and accountability to people. And then uh, another one is that local newspapers should have continuous reports that focus on food production initiatives and the progress that has been made uh, to achieve these initiatives. So those were my uh, four recommendations that speaks to the role of media in food security. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Um, I, I recognize um, Sabel and Danjana's question, which is I'll ask as we wrap up from our side of, um, of the presentation. Um, Doc, lastly, what I will ask you then is, your focus was on this particular area, and I would like to know what were some of the recommendations in terms of, sorry, suggestion um, in terms of areas that still need more research, or, um, uh, and the question comes from the point of view that maybe someone might have an interest in this. And what are some of the areas that we still as a, uh, need more research um, in, in the area that we were searching on? Uh, in my area, as a, which is the media and communication, um, for now, I will just speak to, um, to the way of finding out how these um, news or how these initiatives um, go to the people that I meet. So in this case, um, community newspapers should take their role that we all agree. But if these newspapers still use um, English in their mm. stories, when they cover their stories, um, that information might not be effective. Uh, to our people. And uh, I also think that um, we still need more of these programs or we still need more um, of this research in other mediums, like um, to investigate um, how these um, other mediums tackle uh, the food security related um, stories. Uh, I think the, the issue of food security uh, has been taken as much as important as other issues like um, the, the HIV and AIDS, your cancers, and other deadly um, issues, because you, you don't really find it uh, more often in, in, in the news coverage. But I think we need um, programs uh, even in our community radios, that will speak mainly to the issue of food. Imagine now uh, if you can find like a, a three-year-old know, that knows um, you need to wear a mask. If you don't wear a mask, you'll get COVID-19. Imagine if we were to, to, to cover food security related stories in that way that people well, um, in that way that uh, media will draw attention to the food security and people will be able to understand it as an important issue that needs their attention. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Doctor. Your last part is what is touching me, um, that media, when it wants, it could play a significant role in the extent that a year old now knows that 
if you don't have a mask, then you'll get COVID-19. It speaks of the volume um, or the significance of media because that is mostly because everywhere you turn now, be on radio, be on TV, be on Facebook, it, the adverts and everything, it's about COVID-19. And again, I'll reference um, one time when I was, I was reading, um, I was reading uh, an article as I was doing research and I, I, I read that one of the ways China dealt back in the, I think in the 70s or 80s back then, they were having, um, uh, I think they were having corella or something along those lines, but people were having diarrhea. So it was an hygiene issue. And the only way they were able to bend it up was because it was um, publicized in newspapers, in TV, everywhere people were being given ways on how to deal with the issue, which is the same thing as to what is happening to COVID now. So it, mm. it speaks on the power of the media and how much it can influence on social related issues. If we were really um, taking that much effort. Um, we have one question, Doc, and I think after that we'll have a wrap up. It's from Sabelo Danjana. And he says, did, oh, first he comments like, wow, this is an interesting study. And then he then asks his question, did Doc find anything that promoted people to go to agricultural schools and empower themselves? Uh, from the content, I didn't find anything um, like that, uh, except that, um, Yes, uh, I, I do found um, a piece of writing that encourages uh, graduates to be part of um, the agricultural uh, initiatives um, and food production. But uh, in terms of um, supporting um, those, uh, the youth maybe to go to, um, or to follow the field of agriculture or food production, there was nothing like that, but they only needed their support in terms of food production, which is, uh, it recognizes um, agricultural graduates, but it doesn't show any support um, in terms of uh, financial support uh, for anyone to embark on the um, agricultural or food studies. Um, thank you, Doctor. And just what you're mentioning, um, I think then it gives us a highlight of also that studies like agriculture has have not been given the the limelight to be attractive, or rather, being packaged in a way that will be attractive to young people in order for them to pursue um, agriculture. Um, I think there's still a lot of stigma around pursuing um, agricultural related um, subjects. And that is very detrimental for, for, for the country, um, especially if we have such land that can allow us to produce all those things, um, yet we're not producing enough or not utilizing um, the land as we should be utilizing it. Because um, just last, I'm just reminded that when you go um, the joke at the side, um, it's, as we're talking about, it's very cold. And apparently there's certain fruit that can grow there and they can only grow there because of the advantage of the weather. But mm. that is also not explored. And Jokab is one of the um, um, regions in the Eastern Cape that is hit the most by unemployment, um, po uh, high poverty rates, um, the economic state um, uh, is very bad. So I, I think there's still a lot like you're saying, and I love the fact that there needs to be campaigns on um, motivating people to go to school and pursue a cultural related um, subjects, but for the media also to, to take more content in mostly in a um, vernacular languages that allow the people to understand. And radio stations- You know, you know Issa, well, what is more important about uh, this issue uh, in 2017 um, we had a conference and fortunately in that conference uh, there were journalists um, there was SONEF as well and as I was presenting uh, my study that was 
uh, still in progress at that time. And then one of the journalists said, we cannot always cover uh, food security related content because the government does not fund us with it. Oh my word, okay. Um, the issues of this country of this country are just too many to count. <laughs> There's just too many to count and too many to uh, and which is I that's why I love the fact that we have these conversations and it's now upon us to to find a way and devise ways as to what can we do because um, I mean the many things that we have done and raised money for uh, as a people. Uh, I think that's, this is one of the most important things that we can do also campaigns um, and, and raise money. Um, but the issue is always who's doing the campaign and who's at the forefront, which becomes a challenge if your name is not big enough to attract um, that kind of funding, then becomes a problem. But I think local um, web newspapers need that kind of support. Local uh, radio stations need that kind of support in order to to talk about it because um again uh, i was reading on this paper and back in the day the writer was saying that children is as young as six they knew different trees and what they meant and all of hmm. that and you will remember that even when we were growing up you would stand outside your grandmother will say it's gonna rain today it's not gonna rain today and hmm. they will narrate what it meant and even on agriculture you will know that will go to to the valves with the parents and you learn all these things but that has been taken away from our children and even it was to some extent taken away from us we're lucky for some of us who grew up in the rural areas that we still got a bit of it but we have drifted away now the question remains how do we then move forward um, we need the food we need all those things but we have moved far away from the very knowledge that we needed. Um, and again, it speaks on our um, education structure as a country, which is so that's something I'm very interested on um, in studying about. So um, it, it, it gives me a loophole also to, to further my study and, and look at what do we do as a country um, moving forward. Um, but just one last comment that we had from, um, from Awonke, uh, Naya, he says the stigma attached to agricultural practices is worrying, especially in a country where agriculture has proven to be one of the most contributing factors towards economic growth. Um, just as we're having the conversation, Doc, the one thing that comes up that agriculture remains an important um, part of our country um, in moving forward. And if we don't tap into that, because just um, as I was reading your, to your paper, you, you there was a part where you said the results of the study indicate that local web newspapers frame Eastern Cape province as an untapped food basket. And that it, it tells a story of we have not gone where we're supposed to go. And I'm worried that we're moving further away from anything that is agriculture, yet we have this food basket that has so much to to produce, but we simply ignoring it. And I think it's taken upon us um, as parents to instill um, the love of agriculture, the love of parents to our kids, and maybe motivate their schools to introduce um, the gardens again and as part and parcel of their programs. But anyway, Doc, um, thank you very much um, for your contribution. That was a eye opener. For, for most of us. And I think a lot of people will come back to this research and just um, just to reflect and learn from it because it really touches us all. It really affects all of us. I you know even in five years time, someone will come back here when they can't afford certain things and try to remember what you were saying <laughs> um, about uh, the need to, to grow more food ourselves. And um, from us, the Young Researchers Hub, we thank you. For your contribution and i thank everyone who has um listened on live on on this um seminar today as we tap on something that is a crisis in south africa which is food security and the sustainable goals 
um, of uh, um, globally also touches on this. And as I say good night today, I wish you a great weekend. Please rest. Um, our bodies are shutting down because our immune systems are just struggling. I know there's a lot we're supposed to do, but please do take a rest if you can. Sanitize. Um, third wave is hitting the country at a big scale. Um, sanitize, wear a mask, stay at home if you have to, if there's nothing that requires you to go outside. From me, Isasipingo Simdingi, your host here at Young Research Has Hub, thank you for your consistent support um, on this channel as it allows us to grow um, into research. And from us, we are ending the live today. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Issa. Um, yeah. See, um, I'm just trying, yes, um, end the live. Um, yes, end the recording. And yes.